stenocleidomastoid. Now, this is a very important muscle of the neck region and this is obliquely present over here, very commonly asked as a short note that we have to tell regarding the origin, insertion, nerve supply and action of this muscle. And we have to tell it according to these subheadings. First of all, we will draw a schematic diagram. Now, if this is the base of the mandible over here, this is a lateral aspect of the neck. Below we have the clavicle. This is a clavicle. Anteriorly, this is a section of the sternum. This is a section of the sternum and to be more specific, the manubrium sternum, the manubrium sterni. Towards the upper side, the mastoid process is present over here. And from the external occipital protuberance, a line extends which is the superior nuchal line. This line which I have drawn over here, this is the superior nuchal line. Now, when we talk about this sternocleidomastoid muscle, the origin is from two points and we say there are two heads of the sternocleidomastoid. First is the sternal head. As the name suggests, it is arising from the sternum and to be more specific from the manubrium sterni. its anterior surface. So, the sternal head, the fibers, they are arising from the anterior surface of manubrium sterni and towards the lateral side for the right and the left sternocleidomastoids. Second head of origin is clavicular head. The clavicular head, as the name suggests, clavicular, it is arising from the clavicle and to be more specific the medial one third of the clavicle. The medial one third of the clavicle and, uh, to, uh, from its superior surface. So, it is arising from this region. Now, we will draw these two heads over here. This is a sternocleidomastoid muscle. Fern head is arising from the sternum, another head is arising from the superior aspect of medial one third of the clavicle. This is the sternal head and this is the clavicular head. Now, if we see the insertion of this muscle, the fibers they insert towards the outer surface of the mastoid process. It is going towards the outer surface of the mastoid process as well as the fibers are extending posteriorly towards the superior nuchal line also. So, when we talk about the insertion of the fibers, the insertion of this muscle is first of all into the outer surface of the mastoid process and secondly on the superior nuchal line. The lateral, the lateral part or we can say the lateral one third of superior nuchal line. So, we come back over here, we have seen the fibers originating from the sternum as well as from the clavicle, then the fibers they run upwards and 
they are inserted to the outer aspect of the mastoid process as well as the fibers are going towards the supranuchal line, the lateral one third of the supranuchal line. Now, when we talk about the nerve supply of this muscle, it is being supplied by one of the cranial nerves and that is the spinal root of SST nerve or the spinal part of SST nerve. So, the nerve supply, the motor nerve supply for this muscle is spinal SST nerve that is the 11th cranial nerve. This is for this is giving the motor supply. Apart from this, the C3 and CO cervical nerve fibers, they act as sensory fibers for this muscle. So, they are giving the sensory supply as well as mainly the proprioceptive supply. So, this is regarding the nerve supply. When we talk about the action of this muscle, now uh, when we talk about the action of this muscle, the action is different if one muscle is contracted and uh, the action is different if both the muscles will contract. So, if unilateral muscle contracts, that is one side muscle or we can simply say if one muscle If one muscle contracts, then what will happen? For example, if this, this muscle of the right side, that is the right sternocleidomastoid, it contracts, what will happen? It will bend the head towards same side. So, that is, it is bending the head towards the right side. And when it is bending the head towards the right side, it rotates the head in such a way that the chin will point towards the opposite side. So, this is the action of the sternocleidomastoid. The head is bending towards the right side and the chin is point, uh, pointing towards the left side. So, if one muscle contracts, due to this head bends on same side, the head rotates in such a way the head rotates in such a way that the chin will point towards the opposite side. This is when the muscle, one of the muscle is contracting. If both muscles contract, what will happen in that case? If both the muscles contract, in that case the head uh, the head moves forward like this. This is when both the muscles, when both the sternocleidomastoid, they are contracting. The head it moves forwards. This is regarding the contraction and uh, the sternocleidomastoid it also acts as the accessory muscle of inspiration, respiration. Now, we will talk about the applied aspect of sternocleidomastoid. There is a condition known as torticollis. Torticollis, the torticollis is uh, the, uh, in this what happens, the head turns to one side and the head rotates in such a way that the chin will point towards the opposite side and this happens due to the spasm of the sternocleidomastoid of that side. So, there is mainly the spasm of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Which leads to this torticollis. The torticollis it can be congenital or it may be late, uh, occurring later on which can be if it occurs later on it can be due to the spasm of the sternocleidomastoid it is known as the spasmodic torticollis or it can be due to any inflammation which affects the spinal accessory nerve in that case we use the term as reflex torticollis in all the situations the head is turned on one side and the chin will be pointing towards the opposite side so this this deformity of the uh, this neck portion is created and we use the term as torticollis also known as right neck. So,
So this is regarding the sternocleidomastoid muscle.